the objective of my talk will be to present to you important challenges in the management of corneal ulcer. I will then talk to you about antimicrobial resistance and ocular infections, particularly talking about does in vitro antimicrobial he was, the case at the Center. he was denied treatment to inaccurate PR and explain the process. There is a background noise. Does it translate into treatment failure? And then how do we handle antimicrobial resistance, especially what is the value of fortified drops? Let me begin with this uh, set of pictures from patients of corneal ulcer. If you carefully look at these pictures, I'm sure all of you will ask this question. Can we treat all of these cases using the same strategy of management, especially the same set of drugs? I'm sure your answer will be no, because Cases of corneal ulcers are caused by a variety of microorganisms, which vary from bacteria to fungi, parasites, viruses. And in some cases, a, a corneal ulcer may be caused by immunological phenomena, which is unrelated to any microorganism. And we are also aware of that there is no single drug or a combination that can take care of all of these organisms. And this is our first challenge in the management of corneal infection. We must therefore identify the causative microorganism. And typically this is done by a detailed microbiology workup which comprises of uh, uh, taking sample using chimeras, a spatula or 15 number surgical blade and examining this specimen under microscope using variety of staining technique, as well as inoculating it on variety of culture media that facilitate growth of bacteria, fungi and parasites. For example, this patient um, on scraping showed gram positive cocci and on blood agar showed a beta hemolytic growth and therefore, it was easy to pick up the right kind of antimicrobial for the management of this case. But the problem is not that simple. Let us look at this patient of 20 year female who presented with two days uh, symptoms uh, following contact lens wear. And she used to sleep with the contact lenses on. I'm sure with this history, it will be very obvious uh, what is the causative organism for this case. But the question that comes to our mind is, will you treat this patient of contact lens related microbial keratitis using the same set of antibiotic as uh, my previous case caused by beta hemolytic uh, gram positive cocci? I am sure there will be a confusion as to which antibiotic to pick up uh, for a starting treatment of these cases. And that is not going to be similar in both the cases because there is relative selective activity of antibiotics against particular class of bacteria. For example, cefazolin, vancomycin, chloramphenicol, and fourth generation fluoroquinolones have better activity against gram positive organism whereas aminoglycosides and first generation fluoroquinolones have much superior activity for gram negative organisms. In addition, we are also aware of that antibiotics act by different mechanisms of action. And therefore, if you are using a combination of antibiotic, you must be familiar with uh, the mechanism of action. It is therefore very clear that even when we are aware of the kind of bacteria, we should also be familiar with the antibiotics and their selective activity or preferential activity. That will help us uh, pick up the first antibiotic to start treatment with in patients with corneal ulceration. And this is a second challenge that we face in the management of corneal ulcer. If you think that these are only the challenges. Let me show you this third patient of 50 year female who presented to us with the seven day symptoms. 
She was being treated with moxifloxacin 0.5% every one hourly and atropine sulfate once a day. But despite this treatment, her condition deteriorated over a period of time. When she presented to us, we started treatment uh, uh, based on microbiology. The microbiology revealed gram-positive cocci in pairs and the antibiotic susceptibility of the growth, which was identified as the staph aureus, showed that the patient or the organisms were resistant to moxie, getty, and ofloxacin, but were susceptible to cefazolin. Therefore, it was obvious for us to pick up cefazolin as the antibiotic of choice. There is another case, 73-year female, who presented to us with a history of 15 days duration. She was treated with basifloxacin 0.6% eight times per day, but despite this medical treatment, her condition deteriorated and she developed a limbus to limbus infiltrate. Her microbiology revealed gram-negative bacilli and the growth was identified as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which was resistant to practically all classes of antibiotics except ceftazidine. So what we are talking about is that despite identifying organism, we still need to understand antibiotic susceptibility. And this is the third challenge in making a right choice of treatment in the management of corneal ulcer. So, so, so to summarize, we discussed three sets of challenges in the management of corneal ulcer. One is that these are caused by variety of organism needing different classes of drugs. We also discussed that there are, the antibiotics have differential susceptibility and we are seeing a phenomena of antimicrobial resistance. What is this antimicrobial resistance and what are those super bugs? Antimicrobial resistance is defined as a phenomena wherein an organism become insensitive or is able to grow in the presence of a particular antibiotic or, or class of antibiotic and even multiple classes of antibiotics. And when they are resistant to multiple classes of antibiotics, they are labeled as super bugs. This phenomena was known right from the time penicillin was discovered. Alexander Fleming in his uh, article cautioned people uh, against misuse of, of this drug. But the enthusiasm of having a weapon in hand to take care of all infections resulted in display of these billboards on the streets of New York City and many parts of the world. We kept on misusing antibiotic and very soon we ended up with a situation where penicillins or the organisms became resistant to penicillin. It is not the story just of penicillin. Any class of antibiotic you look into uh, within five to seven years of their introduction in the market, they all showed some or greater degree of resistance. In a more recent a report from World Health Organization, uh, the, they, they found that five of the six WHO regions have reported resistance of 50% or more in hospital acquired infection. And three of the six WHO regions reported a resistance of 25% or more in community acquired infections. We also have now enough evidence that uh, the antibiotic resistance is no more a hospital acquired phenomena. It is originating in community because not only of misuse of antibiotics in the community uh, for human beings, but also in animal, uh, 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 animal uh, uh, husbandry, poultry and agriculture, as well as because of the uh, uh, unregulated disposal of pharmacological waste in, in water. Why is then concern? The concern is because while we are entering into the era of antibiotic resistance, we are seeing an innovation gap. We are not bringing out any new antibiotic. And very soon there is a fear that we will be entering in an era where to treat these super bugs, which is methicillin resistant, staph aureus and carbapenem resistant enterobacteria C, we will be running out of option in managing these infections. So the question comes, is AMR a problem in ocular infections? 
I'll take you back in 1980, where the bacterial keratitis study comparing fluoroquinolone monotherapy with a combination of fortified cefazoline and tobramycin showed that monotherapy was as effective as combination therapy. Further, it was thought that fluoroquinolones develop resistance through, through genetic mutations. And therefore, people thought that we will not be seeing the phenomena of resistance on using the fluoroquinolones. In 1999, we published this report where we showed progressive increase of ciprofloxacin resistance uh, in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Subsequently, many more uh, investigators published the reports of emerging fluoroquinolone resistance, not only in bacterial keratitis, but also endophthalmitis, conjunctivitis, and blepharitis. This led to introduction of 8-methoxy-6-fluoroquinolones in the market, and it was thought that these molecules have superior activity against quinolone-resistant isolates, and because they act by dual mechanisms, it was thought that they will have even reduced probability of developing drug resistance. And they were right. In 2002, when we looked at our isolates from our laboratory, we found that the MIC values were much, much lower, even against ciprofloxacin resistant gram positive coxide. Although for ciprofloxacin resistant gram negative organisms, the MIC was same as of ciprofloxacin. Now over 10 years period, in 2010, when we revisited the susceptibility, we found that both Getty and moxifloxacin have lost considerable activity for cipro-resistant staph aureus, coagulase negative staph, as well as streptococcus pneumoniae. And that was worrying because despite our belief, we saw a reduction in susceptibility. We also published report of rising um, incidence of methicillin resistance among gram-positive organism, including staph aureus and coagulase negative staphs, and emergence of multi-drug resistant pseudomonas in ocular infections. More recently, uh, a large multicentric trial sponsored by Asia Cornea Society has published the results of what is called as Asia Cornea Society Infectious Keratitis Study. This study was run over eight different countries where 12 study centers were, were participating uh, with 27 uh, participating institution. In phase two, some more centers were added into the study. The study was aimed to enroll 4,000 patients, but ended up enrolling more than 6,500 patients. What this study showed that in Asia Pacific region, trauma and contact lens wear are the two most important predisposing factors. But the distribution of these predisposing factors were different in different countries. While trauma was the main predisposing factors in India, China, Philippines, and Thailand, Contact lens wear was the most important predisposing factor in Singapore, Japan, Taiwan, and Korea. Even the microbiology was very interesting. While the fungi dominated the spectrum, followed by gram-positive bacteria and then gram-negative bacteria, the distribution of these organisms were different in different countries. In India and China, fungi were the most important causative organism, whereas in Singapore, Thailand, and Taiwan, gram-negative organisms were the predominant organism, whereas Japan and Korea had predominantly infections by gram-positive organisms. The distribution of these organisms, even among gram-positive bacteria, also showed a wide variability among different countries. However, for gram-negative organisms, Pseudomonas aeruginosa was the predominant gram-negative organisms. In, in practically all the participating countries. Now, what was antibiotic susceptibility data showed that countries like India, Philippines, and China have much higher prevalence of antimicrobial resistance as compared to Singapore, Thailand, Japan. Even here, it was noticed that uh, in India and China, many of the isolates of Pseudomonas aeruginosa were resistant to multiple classes of antibiotics. 
Similar studies have also been published from United States as antimicrobial surveillance. The first one was the surveillance network followed by ocular trust study. And more recently in the month of March, 2020, um, the armor study results have also been published. You may ask a question that when we are instilling drop directly to the site of infection, we achieve very high concentration that lead to rapid control of infection. And therefore we see very high percentage of cure despite uh, what is known as the antimicrobial resistance. And you are right. The in vitro susceptibility tests have several disadvantages, particularly one that you must know is that the cutoff for susceptibility determinations are based on the serum concentration. And we do not have any data on the, on the cutoff values of susceptibility based on ocular concentrations. But despite these limitations, I have shown you through these two cases that AMR is a problem in vivo and lead to treatment failure in some cases. There are also now evidences that prophylactic use of antibiotic, especially if these are used repeatedly, can also result in colonization of eye as well as nasopharynx with drug resistant organisms. Uh, this study clearly showed that from fourth visit onward, the nasopharynx of patient receiving repeated uh, prophylaxis uh, was uh, colonized by drug resistant organisms. So it will be important for all of us to understand the principles on which to manage this menace of antimicrobial resistance. The way forward will be to summarize, know your enemy through microbiology workup, become familiar with the weapons that you have, that is the antibiotics that we commonly use in the management of and susceptibility in your region. This can be best described by using MIC-90 which is antibiotic concentration that inhibits the growth of 90% bacteria. For example, for Mycobacterium shiloni, when we determined MIC-90, we found that azithromycin and clarithromycin, closely followed by amikacin, have the lowest MIC-90 value. And therefore, we treat all the patients of mycobacteria or atypical mycobacteria using amikacin. You can use percentage susceptibility data as well. For example, in a more recent paper that we published, we found that moxifloxacin has developed uh, or 82% of the isolate we included in the study showed resistance to moxifloxacin. Whereas uh, the level of resistance was much lower for ciprofloxacin, gatifloxacin and levofloxacin. Similar results were shown in the A6 study. The pooled data showed that moxifloxacin has a higher level of resistance as compared to cipro, levo, and gatifloxacin. We can also use smart strategies and which will be discussed by Dr. Radhika Tandon in, his, in her talk. In summary, what we want to achieve is a concentration above mutation prevention, which lead to not only killing the susceptible organism, but as well as the resistant organism. And here is probably the value of fortified antibiotics, including levofloxacin 1.5%, which is dispensed in three times the concentration in, in com and other commercial formulations. So to conclude through this talk, we have tried to give you a perspective of my challenges posed by microbial keratitis. I touched upon the AMR, which is currently a serious problem, not just in systemic infection, but ocular infection, and the need for a multi-pronged approach to tackle these challenges. As a physician, we must become familiar with the rationale use of antimicrobials. Thank you very much. With this, I'll stop my screen sharing.